All I'm saying is give Black Widows and Brown Recluse a chance. I am baffled why anyone in their right mind would keep any kind of pet that is poisonous. For the sake of the children in your neighborhood, I hope you don't live where there are earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, or mudslides. It would be bad enough to live through something like that, then have your child's life threatened by a neighbor's loose, venomous, so-called pet spider? Dang. What I'm baffled about is why would my captive Black Widow be any more scary or threatening to the children than all the wild ones outside around here? Ooh, see the little red spot? Black spider, wow. red spot. Wow. Oh my gosh, you guys, I get this comment all of the time, especially when it comes to the Black Widows. What if they get out? And somehow they think that it's gonna like terrorize the neighborhood, that there's like this Black Widow on the loose. And it's like this big threat to these children who are probably already playing outside around rocks that probably actually have black widows living under them because I don't know how you will feel about this, but uh, black widows, they are actually endemic to the United States and especially my area. We have, um, I, th I think we have Southern and Northern. Yeah, there's like a lot of different species of black widows and yeah, we have them like all over. And, and in fact, global warming has caused them to expand their their territory so like if you don't have them now they might be on their way but I just wanted to I guess talk a little bit more about the black widow keeping black widows as pets and also the infamous brown recluse so let's get right into it <laughs> So this is my Black Widow Binx, and she has quickly become one of my favorite spiders in my entire collection. She's a little shy, so she's hiding up here in her little flowers, but Binx was my first pet Black Widow, and she has just absolutely become a star of this channel. I love making content about her. Like, she is so much fun to watch, to feed. I brought her to an expo, and I fed her in front of a bunch of children, and they were all absolutely captivated, even their moms. Big spiders. Yeah, just Me big too. spiders are really cute. Now, they do have a little bit of a reputation though. Black widows are the most venomous spider in North America. But I want to point out that only 30 to 50 people die per year due to black widows. Wait, no, I'm kidding. That's dogs. Only 30 to 50 people die per year because of dogs. Wild animals. <laughs> So actually only about 20 people die per year because of black widows. Just kidding, that's cows. Cows kill about 20 to 22 people a year. So actually there have been zero reported deaths due to a black widow in the United States at least since 1983. And that's not for the lack of people getting bitten. It does happen, unfortunately. It rarely but does occur. And their venom is not anything that is, I would consider mild. They do have some pretty potent venom. But is it as deadly as you probably thought? No. So is it crazy to keep a black widow as a pet? Well, I'd say that it's no more dangerous than having a dog as a pet. Also, I'd like to set the record straight that black widows are actually not aggressive at all. They're very delicate, they're very timid, they're very gentle creatures, and they're really not that great at escaping or moving fast. They can't even really crawl vertical surfaces very well. Like if you look closely in my setups, you'll see that they have webbing all over, and that's because that's mainly the way that they get around. They really rely on the webbing, not only to eat, but also just to move around their habitats. And they spend a majority of their time hiding as well. Like if you don't live in an area where there are black widows, I will say that generally they're found hiding under rocks, hiding in logs, and they just make like a little web and hang out there and stay in it. And although their venom is pretty strong, it's not something that they really use for defense often. Really it's mainly to eat because black widows notoriously can take prey much larger than them. In fact, they can eat like small rodents, they can eat small lizards, and they just have this ability Ability to survive in the wild. They've really been able to adapt and survive their, in their surroundings. And this is probably partially why their territory continues to expand because they are professionals at this point. They're really good at surviving. And, and as for the venom, of course, you don't want to get bit by anything venomous. There's a risk with any sort of bite, whether it be infection or venom. But for being the deadliest spider in North America, they aren't typically that deadly. In fact, less than 1% have a fatal reaction to a black widow bite. Um, so hopefully that reassures anybody that was concerned. While they might not be like the conventional pet, they do make actually very good pets 
very good, low maintenance, interesting pets. Just know though, if you take one from the wild and keep it, a lot of times they will have babies. So, you know, watch out for that. <laughs> and now that we've talked about black widows, let's talk about the evil brown recluse. This is the spider that I've spent years defending, okay? And I actually haven't kept one in quite a while. I just haven't, you know, had one. And, and I do find them time to time. Actually, I, pretty frequently around here I find them. But um, once in a while, one will show up in my bathroom and that's exactly what happened here. Um, so we are actually going to keep this one just as an educational specimen. And because I like to have a brown recluse on hand, I actually caught two, but one matured into a male. So I let that one go and I decided to only keep the one who I am pretty sure is female. Now, if she does molt male, we'll let her go as well. But I do believe that this is a female. Now, brown recluse, they also have a terrible reputation. In fact, I'd argue their reputation is worse than the black widows. But if I had to choose between the two, I'd probably want to get bit by a brown recluse over a black widow. Just because black widow venom is typically very, very painful. Probably a lot of people get bit by brown recluse and they don't even know it because it's so mild generally. Now, of course, there is like that 0.0001% of people that have a bad reaction. But as I've talked about in the past, most of the time, these like rotting skin infections you see are not caused by a brown recluse. And as talked about in Rick Vetter's book, as well as some of his um, studies that he had published with some dermatologists that a lot of times staph infections and other sort of skin infections just get misdiagnosed as brown recluse bites. And the way that he was able to come up with this data is simply because brown recluse don't exist in a lot of the areas that these bites would get diagnosed. Um, so if you want to go a little bit more in depth on brown recluse and their very misunderstood reputation, I have a whole playlist, I think, of brown recluse information. Some of the videos are really old and cringe. I apologize in advance, but the information is still the same. But yeah, we're gonna keep this girl and I wanna rehouse her. So yeah, let's get into that. Here is the little brown recluse that I caught. I am going to name her Brownie because why not? And as you see, I just put her in this like mini canopy tarantula cribs. It was just all I really had on hand at the time. So I just stuffed it with some moss and, you know, coaxed her into it. And I've just been keeping her here for about a week or two. We're gonna stay on theme here. Okay, I decided that we're gonna go all out. Not really but we're gonna go out a little bit we're, we're gonna use a coffin crib because it is just at this point for for these you know most deadly spiders in North America well, of course we have to use coffin cribs because they're spooky and on theme okay also this will actually give her like it has about this actually the coffin crib has more depth which is great but also it has more length as well and and these guys are pretty much more terrestrial I'd say so let's go ahead and get to it Now, brown recluse are extremely hardy animals. They don't really need much humidity. They don't really need too much space. They're pretty easy to take care of. It's funny that the most feared spiders uh, tend to be the easiest to take care of and survive in like the most simple conditions, so. And then I've got like a few different pieces of cork, just like some smaller pieces of cork, and we'll see what works here. And we'll put in just a little bit of this stuff. So yeah, I mean, not the like most intricate ever, but it looks nice. I think we need like a pop of color or something. All right, so I dug around in my drawer. I found a couple things, this little ghost, and then just a couple mushrooms, of course. This is cool. Ooh, ooh, maybe let's add this right here. All right, we'll do it like this. Well, we got her stuff out. <laughs> and as you see, like you just like dump them in and they, they are like, okay, like they're not very good at climbing walls either. But yeah, here's Brownie, check her out. So let's go ahead and transfer her and let me show you like how easy they are to transfer. Boop. There she is. <laughs> I love this enclosure. It's so cute. She's on the little ghosty. It's like not even is the enclosure just adorable, but it's actually perfect for her.
And we're gonna hang on to her just so I have a brown recluse again and I can make some more brown recluse content. Even though I will say the brown recluse content probably gets the most hate out of everything that I film. All I'm saying is give Black Widows and Brown Recluse a chance. Look into them more. Don't read all the, the horrific articles on Daily Mail and stuff like that. That is exaggerated. Grab my Wednesday plushie if you want and you haven't yet. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget I'm in Instagram news. Probably way too much is at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a bunch of links down below. There's merch. There's affiliate links. There is my plushie link. Everything is down there. So check it out. Also, shout out to Rick Vetter. Pick up his book, The Brown Recluse. And yeah, I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet picks.